Hi everyone, I'm Ty Kennington, creator of a game called Fail to Win, a game that I recently released on Steam a few months ago, and now I'm working on a new project. This time around, I thought I'd start a devlog to keep myself more accountable, as well as share some of the things I'm learning during this process. This game is a sort of adventure RPG where your abilities are based on the letters in your name. So maybe the letter R gives you a gun, or C becomes a sort of shield. You just sort of rip the letter out of your name box and then use it in all sorts of different ways. Bit weird, kind of a metafiction type of thing. Uh, but I'm excited for this project. I'm still really early on, so I'm kind of at that phase where I'm getting all the, the different tools I need. And I've been playing around with some different RPG tools in Unity. And there's a lot of great tools that exist that may work depending on your use case and background. But there were a few things that the tools weren't really working for me that I decided I needed to, to make my own things. And so a couple of things that I've been focusing on that I've been building are a dialogue engine and a tile map editor. So first off, that dialogue engine, the whole idea behind that was to make simple cutscenes without spending forever on every detail like you might do for the Unity timeline. I set it up so that you can just write this text script and then it'll in interpret the different instructions and, and just build that cutscene for you. And recently I put it to the test with my Ludum Dare project. And from that, I learned a lot of things that I just wasn't accounting for that I need to fix. So maybe once I get a bit further on that, I might make a video on that topic. But for this video, I'm going to focus more on that other tool I made, the tile map editor. So this isn't actually the first time I made a 3D tile map editor. With fail to win I did make something similar, but with that, I was generating the entire 3D mesh from scratch, and it had slopes, and, and it worked all right for that game, because it was very visually minimal, and it took place in these enclosed spaces, but I never really got the prop placement working quite right, and so it was easier to just use my stage editor to make the actual stage geometry, and then I was just placing all the props manually. This time around, I did things a bit different because, you know, it's more of an RPG. It's a different type of game, and so that wasn't really working as well. I couldn't go with that same sort of minimal style. Instead, what I did was I made a set of tile prefabs, and those different prefabs get placed together, kind of like what you would see with the 2D tile editor, but, you know, in this case, it works in three dimensions. Uh, so some of these tiles are independent objects like houses and trees, and then others are parts of some larger object that gets fit together in sort of like a puzzle pattern. I have an abstract scriptable object class called tile type, and I have a handful of subclasses depending on the different rules on how they are placed. This lets me define a bunch of different tile types and then stuff them into the same tile set to be used by the tile map editor. Here are some of those different tile type types. Basic tiles are independent. You can rotate the tile. You can make it select from a random set of prefabs, and you can give it a random offset position. None of these things really depend on any sort of adjacency rule. Line tiles can grow in one dimension. They consist of a middle tile prefab that repeats, as well as two tiles, one at each end, to cap it off. Rect tiles work like line tiles, but it can grow in two dimensions instead of one. And so you have those middle repeating tiles as well as tiles for the edges and then tiles for the corners. Path tiles work by tracing a series of connected lines. Unlike line tiles, path tiles are able to make 90 degree turns and so you can just trace this path and it's really useful for things like you know, fences or walls. Smart tiles are based on Unity's 2D smart tiles and they work very similarly. You define a list of adjacency rules, and it goes down the list until it finds the first rule that it satisfies. It then chooses the appropriate tile associated with that rule, possibly rotating it into place if that's needed. While you can go and define your own rules, by default when you create a new smart tile it comes with 15 rules that should cover cases pretty well most of the time. And then the last tile type I currently have is texture tiles. These are a little weird, meant to solve a very specific problem, and it was kind of tricky to figure out. If I want to draw on top of an existing tile, for example, to make 
a dirt path on top of a grass tile, then I don't just have one tile. I have two tiles that are combined to make a new tile. For the sake of adjacency, I want surrounding grass tiles to treat it like grass, but I also want the surrounding dirt path tiles to treat it like dirt. In memory, the tile map is stored as a 3D array that it can then serialize to save and then regenerate later if needed. Each tile is stored as a single number representing that tile. I managed to get away with storing override tiles by multiplying the number for the base tile by 10,000 and then adding the number for the override, and so that spot essentially holds two numbers. This should work as long as I don't have more than 10,000 tile types. To actually draw the tile, I used a custom shader. The shader takes two textures, the base texture and the overlay, and combines them in such a way that it shows the overlay texture appearing on top of the base texture. I set it up to work like smart tiles with its own adjacency rules, but instead of choosing from a list of prefabs, the chosen rule will change the UVs of that object. That way I can use a single material and texture. The background texture will still tile though, even though I'm messing with the UVs for the overlay, and that works because of another neat trick. The grass UV does not actually come from the mesh. It comes from the world space position. This means I can move it around and I can scale the texture as much as I want, and it will always tile, even when split across multiple tiles. And that's what I have so far. I still plan to add some more things, like box tiles that work like rect and line tiles, but in three dimensions instead of one or two. And I plan to clean up the interface a bit and give a better size preview so I know how much space this house is going to take up. I also plan on doing some optimization by combining static objects into single meshes. But besides that, it's actually kind of usable now to the point where I was able to throw this level together. While I'll probably change this quite a bit as I go, this is the starting town I plan on using for my game. Some of it was free assets, but much of it I made myself, and I don't know, I think it's alright for someone without an art background, so I'm pretty proud of this. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or would like to hear more details about something in future videos, let me know in the comments. Until next time.